Good afternoon, and yes, we're live. Uh, welcome to my daily chat. This is episode number 667. And continuing from the topic yesterday about if Me Too has gone too far, and I'll get to that in later in the broadcast, um, today's topic is the wounding of Me Too and what we can do about it. And I'll get to that in a second. Before I do that, let me introduce myself so you know I am and what I'm talking about. I should say why I'm talking about this, and we'll go into the topic. Um, my name is Barry Selby. Nice to meet you. I am a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and help women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion of the Divine Feminine, which inspires my work and inspires these talks I do every day, and particularly this topic. Um, and these talks I do every day are called Messages from the Masculine, Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. I've done these for over two years now, which is why I'm at number 667. Lots to talk about. And so the topic again today is the wounding of Me Too and what we can do about it. And in simple terms, yesterday I did, I did a talk, the dreaded 666, 666 um, episode, which was basically on the theme of um, has, oh yes, it was the theme of has Me Too gone too far? And somebody commented about that the, the uh, some may take maybe a set by that. And I want to speak to that part of it because the thing is, the triggering of that wasn't intentional. But I'm also aware that there's a lot of wounding out there because of the things that have happened since Me Too. Just reading articles today about this woman has come forward in further accusation against R. Kelly about stuff on that f field. So Me Too isn't over yet by any stretch of the imagination. But the thing about it, I said yesterday, which is I'm going to recap that briefly, is that Me Too went too far in the sense that it became a whitewash brush, meaning that in the where women were wounded, all men became the culprits or culpable or the um, criminals even that were in, inciting and inspiring and inspiring this sort of behavior against women. So that's why I said it went too far because the reality is Me Too is not a level playing field. In fact, it is a very uneven playing field because there are different degrees of distress, upset and wounding that women have dealt with. I'm using this as a general theme, even though I'm very aware there's also been the other way around at times where women have been um, accosting, sexualizing, do something with men as well. Not anywhere near the same in numbers, but it's been happening as well. But I'm speaking primarily in the direction from men that did things to women that was negative and painful and destructive and everything else. So, The wounding of Me Too is that simple fact that a lot of women have actually been wounded by men emotionally, physically, mentally, psychologically, psychically, etc. And beyond that is that a lot of these women have now lost the ability to trust men in general because of this wounding. Which is what we're going to get to about the Me Too, what I'm going to get to with what we can do about it piece. Because the thing about this topic is it is a sensitive topic, yes but it needs to be talked about. The thing about it that was, I said, did a talk actually a while ago about if Me Too was a cover-up, not cover-up, a, um, a shield in a way, because a lot of people were claiming Me Too without speaking about it. And for me, the only way through to the other side of this is to talk about it and work through the stuff that's in the way, which is the wounding and the hurt on one side and the, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, well, not repentance, that isn't the right word, but the culpa culpability and um, repayment on the male side of the perpetrators, meaning that they need to pay the price. That's, that's definitely part of the conversation. But this piece I want to talk about is for the women in particular who have been wounded, and I mean this from a point of view emotional and sometimes physical wounding that happened from men. There's things that we can do. First of all, for the women who have been through that, there is a whole array of support systems out there. So you don't have to suffer alone. In fact, you can find comfort and support from people in organizations, in counselors, coaching, etc. Um, yes, I work with women in my work. However, in this particular wounding where women have actually been hurt by men from the me, in the Me Too context, the trust that women have of men is diminished. So working with me may not be the smartest idea, just to be clear. That part is, is pretty obvious, I would say, that getting help, getting support is a ideal thing. 
The second thing about what we can do about it, meaning what we can as the general public can do about it, is how do we respond to this? One, how do we set a different example for the men? Hello. Secondly, how women can be of assistance to each other and how men can be cleanly of assistance to women as well. Being a trustworthy man to women is a rare commodity. I know from what I've heard from women who trust me and they tell me this. And it's sometimes a challenge because I don't necessarily know how I can impart that to other men. Being a confidant, being a supporter for women, being a champion for women, and as I said on last week, it was, it was last weekend, about how I'm very clear that women are going to run the world. That's my vision, my intention to support that happening. So my mission is very much in alignment with women. A lot of men don't have that belief. That's the way it is. But I don't necessarily know how I can impart that information to men so they understand that they get it, they get on board. Because yes, amongst all the men I know, there are several who I would say are in the same place I am, where they're trustworthy for women, that they stand up for women, that they honor, respect, and appreciate them, and they don't cross the line, they don't, cross, they don't violate boundaries. Like myself, I don't violate boundaries either. So that um, way of being is out there. The challenge is that it's not widespread amongst the male population, to be honest. In fact, demoralizingly so, it's a smaller population. So I'm speaking to this point of view, I'm speaking this from the point of view of maybe hope for the future, but also that we men have to earn respect, have to earn a woman's respect to be trustworthy, and we are absolutely un. Um, I say we're actually unable to violate. It's not the way I'm going to put it. We're absolutely um, at the point where you get one chance only, because I'm very clear that in this work and what I've been doing myself is for for women to trust me. I've had to become I've had to become much more my true nature, which is authentic and only my masculine heart, because that's what women trust. And there's some of the work out there for men to do who want to have women trust them, is to have that place of really depth in the masculine. I talked yesterday as a recap about how we're separating toxic from masculinity because they don't fit together in my world, in my view, because it really is about being toxic macho, toxic ego, not toxic masculine, because masculine is an energetic that resides within both men and women, mostly in men, to be aligned, but also a way of being for men to have a place of um, deep honor and respect for life. It's the work I've been called to do for the last 12 years, and I've been very passionate about it in my work. And it's very frustrating for me, to be transparent, when I'm around men who don't get that and who tend to be denigrating to women. I remember last, I, I, I'm aware of it because I might face that tomorrow because that happens a lot in some of the groups I belong to. Even though the conscious and awake groups, the way that men treat women, talks about women, act towards women is still way below the standard of really um, respectable. So what we can do and what I'm doing more and more is in conversations with around other men who's, who may say something at, or intone something about women that's not respectful, is I'll say something. And for you men watching this, if you're around other groups of other men who are not respecting women, maybe, or maybe you don't feel comfortable, but if you do feel comfortable, because maybe there's a bunch of big guys you don't feel trust, like you step in front of them and say that to them without them getting all upset, is to say, dude, come on, let's, let's change the conversation because what you're saying is perpetuating what's really the Me Too. The Me Too conversation comes out of, as a global thing, a disrespect of women by men. Simple as that. There's more to it than that, obviously, and there's much more depth to that. But I want to speak to these points about how we as men can step up. And I'm not saying I'm ahead of the pack, but I'm certainly ahead of most of people, most of the men in there, because a lot of men haven't done this work, just to be transparent. And having been very passionate about the work of respecting the feminine, respecting women, it it does trigger me when I'm around men who don't. It's that simple, black and white. So my, my invitation, I'm putting out a guess. Hang on. <coughs> Better than yesterday, but still there, in case you're wondering about my cough and cold that I was going through yesterday. I'm gonna keep this a bit briefer because I don't want to want my throat out. An invitation though to other men is I've got to be careful I say that. I, I'll get so careful. I was going to say something there. Um, 
I'm just looking at ways of how I can help men respect women. Um, presuming you have a healthy upbringing, I'll put it this way, if you have daughters that you respect, if you have sisters you respect, if you have mothers that you respect, treat other women the same way. That may be the simplest way I can put it because so many um, issues between men and women is that men don't respect women beyond the fact that they're sex objects, to be blunt. That's the way men are treating women, which is why the Me Too stuff is happening so much, is men don't see women as women. So one of the things I'll put out there as an invitation for men is to remember that every woman is someone's daughter, sister, or mother. So why not show respect for that? That's an invitation. For the ladies out there, if men aren't respecting you, walk away. There's no need for you to stay there, even if it's a job that you're in. If you're not being respected, report it up the, up the ladder, find a new place to be, take care of yourself. And yes, if you're dealing with your own wounds, your own upsets, your own traumas, get help. Yes, I offer that to my clients, but as I said at the beginning, I said earlier, if you're facing this as a wound against all men, I'm a guy, hello, working with me may not be the best choice. But if you do want to work with me, I'll put a link in the comments for a, for a contact form. Just reach out to me if you want some support because maybe I can help. And I can certainly recommend some people if you want to send a message to me, I can refer you to people, women that I know. Um, that's really what I want to talk about today. I want to keep it short again because my throat is just hanging on. I want to keep it safe. And I want to put this message out there. Um, I think there's more to talk about in the Me Too conversation because it is a big topic. <coughs> Excuse me again. Okay, wrap this up. So the more tomorrow, I hope. We'll see what happens. Topics change every day. It will be later tomorrow, I think, because I've got other commitments at 5 p.m. tomorrow. So just so you know. Um, but if you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, usually. Uh, my Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. The replays go onto my business page, which is Barry Selby author, and also onto my YouTube channel, which you can watch by subscribing to my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby. And on there is a playlist called Messages from the Masculine. Um, these are my talks to do every day to inspire, awaken, and sometimes trigger people. <laughs> if you didn't watch yesterday's broadcast, I invite you to watch that because that was a lot more blatant, deep, and actually my throat stayed together longer than today. Um, it was a provocative conversation. That was 666, of course, with that number it had to be. And uh, if you have any thoughts or comments about this broadcast, please put them below in the comments and I'll respond when I sign off. Again, I'll put a link in the comments for reaching out to me if you want to talk. Um, and I will put together something for, for tomorrow. I know there's some more stuff brewing. It's just not present for me in this moment right now. So rather than just waffling on and wasting your time and mine, I'm going to sign off now. And I'll be back in tomorrow to share some more insights. So with that, I thank you for watching. Um, thank you, Martin. Good to see you. I appreciate the love. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care.